We are having a discussion on the way uh, that the FDA has become uh, watched closely here in expanding treatments that we've seen in the battle uh, and doctors helping patients battle through coronavirus. The latest update there uh, is the FDA's movement here on blood plasma as an option for patients in the battle against coronavirus. We saw them authorizing the emergency use of blood plasma from COVID-19 survivors as a treatment for sick patients. We heard from U.S. Secretary of HHS Alex Azar noting that it delivered about a 35% better survival rate in patients who benefit the most from treatment. Those would be patients at around age 80, not on respirators. And for more on that, as well as the other uh, emergency approvals coming out of the FDA, we're joined by Dr. Irvin uh, Maudlin, the Yale School of Medicine, along with Yahoo Finance's Kristen Myers, and Dr. Maudlin, I just want to start first on your reaction to the FDA expanding that treatment with blood plasma. What's your take on that? Because that's one that didn't necessarily stack up in terms of the gold standard. We didn't see it tested to uh, randomized control trials to prove its effectiveness. What's your take on getting that through? I'm pretty disappointed, in fact, that the FDA is succumbing to so much political pressure and anxiety from the population are not being guided by medical and scientific rigorous principles. And just in the sense that we haven't seen randomized control trials, are you, are you saying that, that the Trump administration is making its force felt on the FDA to, to kind of rush into some of these things? I don't have another interpretation for it, unfortunately, because um, the science behind there being um, specific targeted uh, immune complexes in the plasma which would be specifically helpful to an individual patient uh, are not identifiable and not predictable. And so without prospective randomized analysis of such a therapy, um, it's really, um, it, I mean, it's not quite a Hail Mary, but it's pretty close to it. So Dr. Maudlin, I wanna ask you about the saliva testing. It's been called a game changer. I'm wondering if you can explain for us exactly how saliva testing uh, is better than what we've seen with the nasal swabs. Yes, um, you know, we originally started off developing molecular signatures in blood, which you can take the genomic components of a cancer cell and identify cancer present in the blood from a finger prick. So. This technology has now been switched to looking for the genomic signature of the COVID virus. And uh, all fluids in the body basically have the same material percolating into them. So if you have a sensitive enough technique, you can measure it. And there's a great deal of uh, this um, genetic material from the COVID virus in saliva. So tests have been developed to identify this uh, in a rigorous and accurate fashion. Um, you just put about 25 microliters, 250 microliters of saliva into a small tube. Um, and then that can be uh, measured, uh, you know, with 95 to 100 percent accuracy. It can be done repetitively. The big advantage is um, you don't have to put a swab up somebody's nose or back of their throat, which is appallingly uncomfortable. Usually it initiates either the gag or the vomit reflex. And who needs that? Especially if someone tells you you've got to do that five days a week or seven days a week. And that's yeah. will happen in the future. Um, every time you walk into a restaurant, a hotel or an airline, you're going to have to have that done. Much better just to spit. I might, most people do that naturally all the time. <laughs> well, Dr. Paul, let me ask you this too, though, because we've seen saliva tests implemented in the NBA bubble. We've seen that work out. A lot of people would say, sure, saliva tests might be the, the thing that's making that work, or it could just be the fact that they're quarantining right now and staying in the bubble. Um, does that prove that saliva tests are the true answer here? And, and how big of a change would it be now that the FDA has given this approval? Well, I think it's a big step forward to understanding something uh, as a principle of medicine. If you don't have a treatment, which we don't have for COVID, you don't have any rational form of projected therapeutic intervention, the best thing you can do is identify instantly who's got it and do that in a painless and rapidly manageable fashion. And then the other, uh, other strategy is once you've identified it, rapidly transmit that information um, we're in the process of developing a, an app on a visa phone on a v, on the phone, so these people can then be instantly segregated so they don't contaminate other people, and that's the only way to manage an unmanageable disease. And people just have to come to that conclusion. We have an unmanageable disease at the moment, and the only thing to do is what they've been doing for thousands of years: quarantine people. 
So doctor, you call this disease unmanageable at the moment. I'm wondering if, if one, you think it's partially unmanageable because we've allowed politics to get in the way um, of our combating this virus. And at least when it comes to testing, if the saliva testing will allow us to speed up um, getting tests out to people and getting the results back. Yeah, I agree with both your statements. I think politics has completely destabilized the proper management of this disease process. And I think that uh, having saliva tests going to make it much more uh, facilitate everybody getting it. And then the saliva tests will be sped up, so to speak, so they can be generated much rapid. And that's just going to take some technological tweaking to get that done. Um, but I think those are the basics of what needs to be done to control this in the intermediate and long term. Hey investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.